John has been juggling for just over three minutes. So it's understandable if your attention has started to wander. But in the first few throws of the pattern, your attention might have been focused. Excitement heightened. Curious to see if John was able to juggle the pattern. But then a dozen or so throws in, and you start to relax. You start to trust the juggler's ability, and your attention, understandably, starts to drift. But as time passes, your attention might slowly start to focus on the juggler again. <coughs> this time, perhaps noticing the differences in technique. One elbow position to the other. The wrist, shoulder, maybe if he's got weight on one foot more than the other. Maybe even the feeds of sweat on his forebrow <coughs> in his concentration. And as time passes, you start to see the lactic acid building up in the arms, and you start to question how long he can go on for. <laughs> After all, John is human, and with time, the only certainty is failure. Johnny, <laughs> John. If we take a juggling trick, say, five ball back crosses, we can learn a lot about juggling. Five ball back crosses is easy to understand. It's five balls juggled behind the back and caught in front of the body. Simple. <coughs> of all the circus arts, juggling is the easiest to coach oneself. It's difficult to spot yourself in a handstand or see what's going wrong midway through a somersault. <laughs> So, using basic maths, biology, and modern sports training methodology, we can increase our learning rate, particularly using a mathematical model called SightSwap. SightSwap was devised in the 1980s and is a bit like music notation, but for juggling. It's transcribed as numbers, and these numbers can help us learn new tricks. So, I use the classic patterns, 522, 55500, 50505, 55244, 552, five, and of course, 55550, five, 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 to increase my learning rate. Every practice session, I would record a few attempts at the pattern and see what was going wrong. So in this particular case, you can see I go into the back crosses quite nicely, but then I start to throw too high, pushing the pattern over to the left, and eventually drop. <laughs> so then the next practice session, I would analyse, in this particular case, my right arm and elbow position, and try and correct the problem. To see my progress, I charted my most successful run of five ball back crosses, which you can see here. But unfortunately, being able to do something in practice and on stage is quite different. So I charted a slightly more realistic average of this trick. So, good. so after 150 hours of practice, half a million throws and catches, approximately 100,000 drops, I've reached around an 80% success rate and a personal best of 40 throws and catches. Incidentally, the world record is 125 for seven balls. <laughs> Held by a 14-year-old. <laughs> I love juggling for a number of reasons, but probably the most important is the sheer unlikelihood of success. I relish in the futile struggle towards the seemingly pointless and improbable. I think it's one of humanity's greatest qualities and should be celebrated rather than shunned. But, despite my positive outlook and wealth of statistical data, I'm still apprehensive, still worried that you'll judge me on my failures, and fundamentally worried about the drop.
name's Aaron Sparks, this is John Udry, this is Matt Pang, we are Circus Geeks, and welcome to Beta Testing.